Will I ever climb a steep mountain chute again? I will. I will with the same enthusiasm I did last year, but my respect for the mountain has changed. March 21st started out perfectly. I was very excited to go riding with Jim Phelan and the Big Sky Extreme team in the beautiful mountains of Montana. My friends, Steve, Wes, Ross, and I drove over to Lion's Head to meet Jim and the crew. As we pulled in, the clouds began to lift and the temperatures began to rise. We headed for the steep mountains around Lion's Head. We came to an amazing bowl, steep and absolutely full of snow. The big Thundercats started exchanging marks. Wes then started climbing an avalanche chute to the right of the bowls. I watched for some time, then decided it was my turn to hit the hill. I came down from my climb, stopped and watched for a little while before hitting it again. As I throttled up the chute I was packing lots of track speed. I thought in my head that I was going to climb out of the chute. All of a sudden there was a loud thud and I lost control of the sled. The sled lost all power and I could not get it turned. I was stuck. I worked on my sled for about 15 minutes to get it turned around. I had tried to keep it running because I knew it would flood, but it quit on me. I got it pointed downhill, I coasted to the bottom of the chute and started working on it to get it running again. Trennis went by me and I gave him the thumbs up. I turned back around and was looking at my flooded sled when suddenly Ross screamed, Run Doug, run! I turned to see the mountain coming at me, I was so scared. I looked down at my sled and thought, oh my god, I'm going to be buried. I started running toward the group of riders, but they were more than 150 feet away. I could hear sleds starting and knew they were running for their lives also. I saw a small pine tree and I grabbed onto it. The snow cloud slammed into me with tremendous force. The avalanche wind was blowing furiously and I could see nothing but white. I waited for the wall of snow to come and bury me. It never did. My thoughts immediately turned to Trennis. He had lost his sled and went under the snow over a thousand feet up the hill. He was surely buried deep. But as the snow settled, I could see Ross standing by a hand that was sticking out of the snow. He started digging. I could hardly walk, I was so scared. I stumbled over to where I left my video camera. I picked it up to film the aftermath. A friend came up and told me that it was not our turn to die that day. Trennis was a very lucky man. We were all very lucky. All that can be said about March 21st is thank God no one was killed. I love freestyle hill climbing. I will climb steep mountain chutes again. I wake up every morning excited yet apprehensive of what might happen on the mountain. That is what I love. It's always an adrenaline rush. Every day you put it all on the line. Every day you push your body and your sled to their limits. Some days you cheat death and come home to your wife and kids. I didn't think too much about it at first. I clambered out of the hole in the snow where I'd been buried. I traveled under the snow for over a thousand feet at a speed estimated at 45 miles per hour. I came to rest with my right hand sticking out of the snow, my helmet ripped off, my mouth, nose, and ears packed with snow. Then everything turned gray. the worst feeling I've ever had in my life. 
is the avalanche scree it broke in several different spots it broke at the top of course just like last year broke through the trees too that's what it didn't do last year turn us a sled right there half buried three-quarter buried Trennis was completely buried right there. I think his hand was sticking out. I'm freaking real. I can honestly say I don't want to do that again. Hey, missed all them trees and everything. Jeez. You lost it way up there off that rock ridge. What made you lose Your sled took about a 20 foot jump. It, it, no. It broke everywhere. It broke all below him. You Look. I, no. I, I, I turned. I was fine. I seen it break. It broke too far in front of me. Yeah. When I went to get out, go over it, I, there was a bank and I just shot straight in there. Yeah, you were like 20, 30 feet in the air. Better to you back were off and stay behind it or not? Oh. You talk. You okay? I thought you were gone, dude. I kept seeing daylight. Did you swim? I couldn't move. Couldn't move. On Sunday, I walked into church and a friend stopped me. He said that on Thursday, the day of the avalanche, he had an overwhelming spirit come over him. He felt something was wrong with someone he knew. He knelt down and prayed for that person. He knelt down and prayed for me. I could not hold back any longer. I started crying. I thought it had me. I didn't think I was going to make it over the hill. When the gust of wind hit, you couldn't see anything but the snow. I mean, I thought it was still coming. I thought it was going to bury me before I got over the hill. It was incredible. Many people ask if I ever snowmobile again. I tell them yes, even though it will never be the same. I look out my front door at the Rocky Mountain front with a newfound respect for mountain riding. I have a new outlook on life, and I have a new yearning to be the best father husband and friend I can be. And most important of all, my wife and kids still have me to hug every night.